Thank you for joining the September 20th, 2018 Volta call. And we are recording the session to post it later to YouTube. Keep that in mind during any discussion or presentations if we have any today. And with that, I think we'll get started with today's meeting. So just a, a heads up, we did mention that this first agenda item may move to a later date. So right now we are going to target Tuesday for that session. So what we can do then is go right into some sprint planning. Okay. When we go to the backlog here. So, and Sean, I think you're on mute. Sean, you uh, hey, Daniel, Daniel, can you mute your phone? We can hear your conversation. We don't want anything to be, we don't want anything to be recorded. <laughs> Sorry, I mute myself. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can start at the top looking at defects. I'll take suggestions if there's a better way from the group to approach this. I'm open to suggestions. Okay. If I don't hear anything, we'll start looking at I think defects and features in the backlog. Um, Julie, yes. uh, before we do that, right? So um, I think there is a proposal to cut, to at least tag 1.5 release by the end of this week or early next week. Um, is that something we can address first before we go into details? Sure. Um, I'll let you go ahead. Right. Um, so, uh, in preparation for uh, AT and T's deployment for the for the fourth quarter, um, uh, AT and T would like to have the one dot five release tag, uh, and and then uh, and also better branched out. So we're going to have we'll suggest to have a one dot five release, and we believe that the benefit will also. Uh, have at least have, we have official release for AT&T deployment and also the for the uh, I think the ONS uh, demo next week from ONF and also the BBWF demo also. So, um, I'm the Matt. Do you have any additional comment you would like to make uh, regarding to uh, one dot five uh, making a one dot five release? Well, I just showed up, so I don't know what was said, but yes, I would like a 1.5 release. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I was saying, uh, so basically we'd like to have 1.5 release for an AT&T deployment and then for the uh, SEMA demo in the, in the ONS Europe and also the BBWF uh, back the end of the October. So. Does the now, does now, now it's time for that as well because I mean it's you know relatively stable. We just went through some testing with it, worked well. Also because I'm pretty sure technology profile and resource manager work is going to start again or pick up, and that will likely break things while that's going on. So it's okay. Probably good to do that. Okay. And then the, I, I think this this will be the last release before the 2.0 comes in. Maybe um, that we're still monitoring this. Um, I'm, I'm I apologize if we um, uh, I, uh, release some of the stuff because uh, new things keep coming in. But we do believe uh, 1.5 right now is a is a better hardened and much stable release based on the 1.x framework. So anybody in the community has any comment, uh, concern and comment? Will we be able to do cherry pick bug fixes and stuff? Because I don't know if all the open OMCI will be ready at that time. Uh, I'm sorry, explain that, Chip. Well, I don't think I'll, I don't know if we'll have all the open OMCI stories completed and uh, debugged maybe by the end of next week. And I know we're going to have some adapter changes for the Atran OLT and ONU to consume the technology profiles and running without XPON. Are we going to I be mean, able to do managed inserts? I guess it's really just a matter of if, you know, whatever's going on in a master will keep going on. And then if 
certain changes when it gets pulled into 1.5 branch, then we can do that. I guess really 1.5 is for anybody who's wanting something specifically for, you know, demo or production purposes with the Edge Core OLT, with the Broadcom Open OMCI adapter. Um, yeah, and then anything bug fix related will pull from master or vice versa. So Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I guess cool. I would expect you would do your your work shift in, in master and we would pull into one five anything we thought we couldn't live without. But uh, otherwise I mean we, we just need one five to be stable. I mean, right. and, and okay, yeah, I, I understand that. So I just wanted to make sure that we we're able to if it's going to be used for broadband world forum that we're able to make sure that our ad adapter is working as best as we can. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I, Chip, I think we will try to work as much as close as we can to make the very I mean, it, synchronized. I mean, if, if it's another week, I, I, we could probably do that. I guess it's just what else is going to come along in that week, right? If, you know, stories about technology profiles start making their way in and we have to start redoing all the adapters for other purposes now you know everyone's out of alignment and we got to pick a good point to, to to stop again okay yeah i understand so it's really just kind of a timing thing where you know it's like if anybody's planning on doing anything into the adapters in the next two weeks and we haven't tagged one five yet then you know we got to kind of plan around that So, 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 Matt, Matt, right now, we we have one week buffers. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I think that's fair. I think we'd give it a week, and then anybody who wants anything in one five, you know, we got got a week, and then maybe this time next week, we'll go ahead and and create the branch after we're sure everything is is continued to stay stable. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Great, thank you for the the. I think that's yeah, that that that's reasonable. Any other additional comments? Okay, so so I think we have a consensus. Last last chance. Okay, <laughs> Julie, back to you. All right, thank you. Any other topics that we need to address with the group? before we go back to looking at uh, planning for Sprint 8, which starts up next week. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, I, I, I oh, no, no, no. Um, so I think, um, and then Don, you, 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 you mentioned something about uh, 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 the abstract OT. Is there something uh, the maybe at some point we we can demo also in the Volta end? Yes, I mean okay. we're not set up for it right now, but we could demo it. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you want? Functional. You can you can build an abstract chassis, uh, bring online cards and <clears throat> provision subscribers. Um, so. I mean, if you guys want to put that on the docket for next Thursday, we could probably set up a demo. That would be great. Do you, do you want to have a brief uh, introduction now? Uh, just people, you know, we, we, I, I think we're trying to burn some time here. <laughs> Sorry, Julie. Uh, no. It's all right. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Well, why don't you do the business you already have planned and, and if there's time at the end. Okay, great. Thanks. Julie, back to you. Okay, thank you. All right, so so Don, I'll put put you guys on the list for next Friday. While we're actually talking about demos, it is one thing I wanted to address. I was planning to talk about it maybe Tuesday. We can do it today. If there are demos people would like to do from the content that was delivered with Sprint 7, it'd be nice to have another demo that we could include and review with the group. Do we have any volunteers? And if you don't feel like volunteering on, on the call today, you can always email me separately, and then we can line up a schedule. Okay, I don't hear any other volunteers at the moment, but uh, again, feel free to email if you have a demo you would like to present to the group. And let's go back to the backlog. So we do have a number of 
of defects in the backlog still, and I think we don't have this as up to date in terms of um, pulling the defects up to the top that we normally do, so apologies for that. We have, uh, okay, I think we discussed all of these pretty much when we're doing Sprint 7 planning. Is there anything that folks would like to look at or discuss for Sprint 8? It's on the screen right now for defects. Okay. Do we still I care about console, generally speaking? Well, yeah, that's, that's a good question. So that was, I believe, a question that was going back to, uh, or was flagged to go back to the TST. And we probably never officially pulled the TST for a vote here on, on I mean, how just, many I, permutations we want to include. I just see it come up here and it's come up on Volta Discuss, people trying to install the console version. And I mean, if nobody's using it anymore, then it's kind of hard to support. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's probably worth deciding whether or not to just pull it and say it's no longer supported. Is that true that the Docker Compose still using the 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 console? Um, can can you remind us uh, on that vote to compose? Well, there 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 another issue, right? There there multiple multiple ways to 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 uh, bring up a Volta or install Volta. One of them is using Volta com Compose. Um, yeah, well, well, that's uh, the, the Volta Compose is really in a development environment. Uh, right. uh, people should be using uh, Kubernetes uh, environment uh, in, in, in real deployment like production or even for, for real testing. But locally, those Docker Compose files, it's really meant for development. So like people can de deploy whatever they want in the development environment. They, they want console, etc., CD, whatever they want. Um, but the one that uh, we are putting a little bit more effort at this time is etc. CD. But on the other hand, uh, we have a shim layer, a KV shim layer that we, have, we are putting in uh, everywhere uh, so that we are not dependent on etc. CD or console. So we can go ahead and say, okay, the, the version that we're going to support officially would be at CD Francais, uh, but uh, the way we design it, we are not uh, precluded to use only at CD. We could use uh, console also. But but just that the support portion of the console may be a little bit, uh, I would stop say we probably have been lacking or it's not, it's not, at this moment is required. Um, exactly, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, so I'll add a comment in here and, and give this as a formal request for the TST members to uh, come to a view on whether or not we need to support this officially going forward. If not, I think we have a number of defects that we could close out as, as not in our development stream. Oh, so I think I yeah. think we can decide now. I don't know that we need to wait to, to wait Excellent. for the TST team, right? Uh, I agree. <laughs> if, if we if we don't want to support it, which which I think is is the case, we're going to at CD. We're moving to at CD. It's time to it's time to cut out the the legacy stuff. We don't want to end up like these big <laughs> these big companies that that support crap forever because because they built it once. Because uh, we'll never move forward. So uh, my my suggestion is we say today. Uh, console is there, use it at your own risk, but we're not doing anything to evolve it. Uh, it's uh, deprecated and and end and it there. You have so my vote I, for I, that. I, I thought it was still, um, maybe I'm out of date on this, I thought it was still issues potentially with etcd on uh, at high load. Um, console seemed to behave better under those circumstances. Is, 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 has there been any Resolution to the LCD issues. I, I, one thing I, I think I have to say is when we never turn up a lot of the PM logging or something like that uh, when we were doing the console. So I, I, I mean, so the performance or scaling for the console uh, is that is that a true statement? I mean, I do know. Uh, uh, we, go ahead. We, uh, I mean, we've done a little investigating and having things like compaction and defragmentation turned on and then 
not continuously writing additional keys un unnecessarily prevents it from filling up. And I don't think that's so much an etcd problem as it was how we're using etcd. And the application design. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's tested trying to have, you know, hundreds of thousands of keys in there legitimately, um, but we found that whenever etcd starts misbehaving, it's more likely that we've just been using it wrong. Yeah. I, I think there's two things. things. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's another aspect of it that we need to look at, and and, and we mentioned that uh, uh, a while back, a few months a while back. It's uh, there is those are KV store, and KV store are not meant to be a general database. Uh, there's a limit of uh, what they can do, and there's a limit of the number of keys that they can store. And uh, I, I believe etcd is in the range of eight gigabyte of data to uh, that they kind of recommend of. Uh, of the limit that we can go with. And uh, so it's it's not really between etcd or console. It's really how much data we'll eventually get and whether KV store will be able to support that or should we move to a different type of uh, NoSQL database. So that's, a, that's, that's more a long-term uh, decision. But immediately we know that uh, there is a limit on, on the number of keys we can store whether it's etcd or console etcd at least it says this they say there's a their recommendation is eight gigabyte and console doesn't give that recommendation but we know there would be a limit there too well and like i said if, if compaction is turned on on the cluster it will um clean up after it will it can be configured to remove old revisions of etcd data in a, a rotating window um and that that has helped quite a bit mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, yeah, maybe it might mean we need two classes of storage. We need etcd for really the in-memory work of keeping adapters going, and then maybe another type of storage for more long-term, you know, stats and things like that that need to just be put away and kept for a longer period of time. So I think uh, we, one of the things about database uh, options was one of the items we we were original when we planning the 2.0. I think that's also um, uh, one of the list. So I think we probably do need to bring that back again. And you know, if if you have a more external database, how exactly the function of both the core or adapter will support that? That I think would it be a, is that business as usual or it's it's a little bit different. Well, there, there's one aspect of it, uh, uh, Sean, that uh, when we had, were having those discussions, we're talking about the, the total number of devices that we're going, ever going to have. Mm -hmm. And I believe like uh, we still need to have uh, uh, some realistic data uh, from, uh, from uh, most operators and whoever is going to right. use it to figure out like what is the upper limit of what we want to store. If, if the upper limit is, is in the range of one or two gigabyte of data, we're good where, where we are. But if, if those range are much, much, much higher, then we have to look at other options. But on, on, the, on the other side of things, the way we are designing, for example, the core, uh, we have a, a shim layer. Uh, at this time, we're using KV store. Uh, even the KV store, we have a shim layer on, on, on top of that. But we could easily remove uh, a KV store and replace it by another type of store. So it's not that uh, it's not like we have to overall everything in in the core uh, to allow for that. Okay, I think uh, that's you know touch a few issues uh, like scalability of uh, the Volta cluster and then and, you know with Onos you know especially maybe when we introduce Ziba, I think uh, the compute and storage requirement is definitely something we need to do a very very thorough study. Uh, we've been asked many times regarding to you know what you know what a minimum cluster will be and then if the if the service provider wants to grow it um does it mean the the uh, you know to to a certain degree then when will the new uh, another uh, con uh basically compute resource need to, and then cpu need to be uh, uh okay. ramped up so those are the stuff we definitely need to look at and then i think it's getting more and more prominent that's a that will be yes so, Sean, in order to look at that, we, we need deployment models from the service providers, right? What are your deployment models? How many, you know, 
how many OLTs and, and the respective ONUs are going to be managed by each SEBA instance or Volta instance. Without that information, we're just shooting in the dark, right? So, Correct. so we really need to understand the deployment models and, 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 and you know, the, hopefully there are hundreds of deployment models, but maybe there's two or three that we need to look at and understand and then say, okay, in, in, with this deployment model, we need to we can use a KB store because there's only three or four gig of data we'll ever be storing uh, uh, for the core, right? For for the devices and and in other cases it might be oh man we need like ten or fifteen gig of, of data for this deployment model. Uh, different database needs to be used, and we can plan for that and make sure that, that we've exactly. got options for deployment. But without the models, we we can't really we can't really do that. I understand that, and then I think that's one of the items actually I've been reaching out internally and externally trying to decide that. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so uh, and, and I see Bjorn is here, um, but, so that's another, that, that's one of the items, you know, uh, I think we talked about this a, a while back, but we definitely um, get distracted, so now we need to make sure we have the available information for, for, for the modeling. Okay. Um, so, so, Sean, let me ask you something then. Is this because this has been lingering for a while? We had some scalability targets that were going to be clarified, you know, back in April, as well. Um, that was for 2.0. We need longer term address as well. Is there a timeline we can set for a response <laughs> back from <laughs> from the service providers? Um. I think I, I will probably put something out uh, in a couple weeks, and then once I have the model available, then I will reach out to the service provider and let them know what what exactly the information I'm. Or I can do that in parallel. Actually, I had an email open uh, was uh, targeting um, the service providers uh, within the Volta community, so I. I I never send it out. <laughs> so uh, let, let let me let me see whether we can get this thing uh, addressed, um, maybe by BBWF. End up okay. okay. Um, okay. So so now that we've gone uh, uh, and had a bunch of slide discussions, can we go back to the etcd versus console and whether or not we're saying, you know, yeah. use console at your own risk. It's there. It's you know, you can use it, but don't raise any jiras on it because you're not going to get any help. Yeah. Yes. But before we do that, let me. Uh, Bjorn, are you online? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm okay. sorry. I have to unmute first. Okay. No. 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 Um, so, do you do you, uh, on on your Access 4.0? Uh, are you guys using XSD or console? Is there uh, or I mean, do you have any position on this one? I'm pretty sure we we have one, uh, and also about the scalability, uh, I'm pretty sure we we have a concrete um, a concrete target where we where we should end up. Maybe we don't have a, a, a kind of a timeline. Uh, at which uh, point in time we need which kind of scalability, but we should have uh, uh, we, we we should have the target values. Uh, and uh, in parallel, I'm writing already a mail to uh, to some other folks inside DT, which are um, yeah, which are more belonging to the architecture uh, sites and and so on, uh, and try to figure out what's uh, what what our targets are, and especially also in in etcd and console. Right. Um, uh, uh, just put you on the spot again. If you, you, if you guys doing you the, doing the trial, um, are you using the one dot three, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I think that that's fair to assume it's the XED version. Um, uh, if someone else knows about the information, let me know. But I think that's the assumption I have. Um, uh, Telefonica is not here, but but uh, anyway, if if this have something working, uh, I I think we we probably they probably don't really concern this. I'm I'm assuming. Um, so okay, Sergio, back to you. Okay, I'm just saying. So so do we? So so uh, in my opinion, we should just end support for console, and and it's uh, sure you can use it, but but we won't support you. That's that's sort of the the, the line I think we need to draw in the sand so that we can move forward and. And, and go to newer technologies and, and continue to advance the project. So my question is to the remainder of the TST members, is, is that fine? Are we good with that? 
Hans says yes. I'm good. This chip, I'm good with that as well. And Shad is on also. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, makes sense. Okay, we got uh, it. And this is, oh, and this is oh. Sean. I, I guess I'm outvoted, but <laughs> I, was, I was going to suggest maybe we just put a, a yeah, just an email out to the community and just see what feedback we get over the next week, and then if if there's no massive objections, then let's uh, go ahead. Yeah, that, that'd be fine with me. I, I think with the, the amount of work that's being checked in right now, I doubt very seriously anyone's pulling off master, so I, I don't expect any big issues. Yeah, but uh, it's good to check. Yeah, I mean, for production. Okay. Okay, so, so, uh, so I guess I'll post something on Volta Discuss at, at some point today. Okay. Uh, asking the question. Well, I, I, I'm going to phrase it as a we're planning, not as a question, but we're planning to discontinue support for console. If anyone has any objections, please let me know. Uh, rather than, uh, you know, starting it off as a, you know, are you guys okay with? Because uh, I think I think we we want to be a little more forceful than that to try and move this forward. Yeah, and then someone has to take action to have any <laughs> any impact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or 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 if someone definitely needs counsel, maybe they can they can provide resource to maintain that. I think that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. So I mean, in that email, definitely find out who's going to support it because we're certainly not. Right. If nobody's using it, nobody wants to support it. Then we kind of just answered the question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add that as a, as a question. If, if, if anyone has, if anyone does have objections, uh, you know, what, what are their plans to continue to support it? <laughs> it's so open source. <laughs> uh, is that all community work? No, okay. I think that's a good plan. Okay. Great, thanks. All right, thank you. And so, Sergio, I have you tagged. I think you were sending the email for that. We have a majority agreement to deprecate. And then, Sean, I think you were fine with it as long as there was this uh, email to the community first to check for objections. Correct? Sean, yeah. is that? Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll wait to see uh, what the response is from the community and, and probably give it a time frame for them to respond by so we don't leave it open-ended and then yeah. if it does no objections are raised then we can start closing out the related issues from the backlog all right so I think that was a good discussion thank you everyone okay so let's excuse me I gotta go on mute for a second okay so uh, Looking at the features that we have, um, not sure if they're ones that we can look at from the backlog here. We've got a number of the high priority issues and see if there are ones that are ready to pull into uh, Sprint 8 at this point. Do we have any views? Or Sean, for you as product owner and also for the other service operators on the bridge. If there are high priority items that you would like to see addressed, because we do have some DT requirements here as well. And see if there are ones that we would request support for Sprint 8. So I think, uh, Julie, maybe instead of doing it right now, or we'll do it offline and then. Okay. Okay. In that case, I think probably where that leaves us is if we'll do that as an offline effort, then if there's no direct feedback from the, the rest of the community on the call today, then we probably can proceed with, you know, we have a lot of work still for the main uh, epics for, you know, open OMCI, for tech profiles, for the adapters and so forth, and for the core work. So we probably can leave that as we've been doing it and having the technical leads map things in as appropriate as they're coordinating the development team. Does that work for everyone? 
or is there other discussion we need to have for prioritization with the group today? I think that uh, Julie definitely would probably need to pick out a list for people to adopt to, you know, because I think uh, people, uh, the team probably going to still busy on a, a containerization of the adapter. Um, and then plus the technology profile adaption, yeah. um, ad adaptation. Um, so I think we, we, there are things in the backlog. Um, I, if we definitely need someone to take care of it, then we need to bring it up. I, I think right now I don't expect a volunteer to, yeah. to do anything. Um, so. I'd agree with that. I think we want to make sure at least we take a close look if there are critical items that still are, are viewed as needed, needing to be pulled in. In addition, we need to see if we can find resources. Right. But we'll do an offline effort, um, Sean, with you and, and also the service providers, please. Yes. Think, and anyone else as well also. And then I think it's worked well with the technical leads for prioritizing the work on the development track for the key areas and then pulling that in as appropriate. Uh, so thank you again to all the technical leads for the work you've been doing there. Um, Chip, Chip, are you trying to say something? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I, I thought Chip, Chip was going to say something. Okay, sorry. Okay. Then uh, I think probably we'll leave this then for, uh, so Sean, if I could get the feedback and we do the offline work so we can have it ready for any discussion if we need it on Tuesday, if uh -huh. you could get me prepped for that, that would be appreciated. And so I'll work with you on that offline. And then let me go back to the, which, which, Green, am I trying to view here? Here we go. Active sprint. So we have a, our current sprint is ending at the end of day tomorrow. So we do have a number of, of to do items still and in progress. So I have status updates on a number of them. I do expect some of these will be carrying over into sprint eight as well. And so we'll have some work there already slated in after we close out sprint seven. Okay. Uh, any other feedback from the group for Sprint 8 and what the expectations are? Okay, I think probably we'll uh, continue offline for this and then have the technical leads pull items in. And then uh, again, a call for demos from Sprint 8 functionality if there are people who have a demo they would like to prepare and present to the community that is always appreciated and then we'll continue with sprint planning on Tuesday and also target the discussion on fall 506 so I'm not sure how much time we'll need to allocate for that but I think there there was a fair bit of some some questions from the community that it may take us a little time to work through that okay uh, let me just see if there are other items that need to be brought up for discussion with the group we did cover one item that we'll be taking to the community for feedback as well. And then the deployment model, we have an action item for the service providers to pull together and collect some info so we can provide that to the community. Uh, we have a, a little time to get that done. So ju just on, on that one, Julie, yeah. um, so I mean, is, is there a list of the high runners for storage in uh, data in the KB store or database or whatever it might be and so I mean historical PM is potentially huge but I, we kind of talked about that would actually get exported off uh, northbound uh, to a management system um, uh, do we have any limits on you know how, how big the log can grow um, how much storage is going to be required by logs um, and if there's anything there are you know the high high runners in terms of storage that anybody else has. Maybe, maybe we could make a list. Oh, I guess you started. Uh, yeah, one one thing to consider with SCD is every time you update a key, it keeps the old key. So that's what, where Matt was talking about compaction. It's like even if you're very frugal with what you write in in SCD, 
if you don't maintain that, it will grow to the to beyond the limits of what it can carry. If you're if you're constantly updating keys, right? So a lot of the problems we saw were because you know un operationally none of us really knew how to run SUD, and just with some some normal SUD type or tuning. you know tuning and maintenance, you know normally scheduled maintenance. Uh, it's it's all of a sudden you know, manageable and viable. But I still wouldn't want to put you know every 30 second whole cycle statistics in there. No, it's no. not the right place for it. I mean, it, it's to me, it's, that's not even valuable there. Right. So I mean, time series databases that sure. performance metrics actually make sense. Yeah. So I mean, I'd almost say there might just need to be a different class of storage altogether for, like you said, time series data or just. Well, I mean, like Kafka we, we, oh, is, oh. is a, a where we're Look, looking to maintain like a week's worth of sure. local data, but yeah, just, not, then, just don't put it in. But then, you know, from H and T's perspective, then we will, you know, immediately or on regularly scheduled batches, we will punt it up to the the systems that the uh, advanced technical support people would be looking at, whether it's NetCool or uh, whatever else they use, right? That you know, put it into a normal network management platform that. You know, we've got deployed all over the place. Does that, does that answer kind of your question on where where our heads at? Yeah, I think so. So, so basically, is, is there an option to uh, so things that like logs or, or other type of you know debug data? Is there an option to store that you know outside of the the local compute, so somewhere in the management network? Is that is that the plan there, for deployments? Or? Well, you mean for AT and T or SEBA? Because SEBA expects to have what uh, log stash and Elastic Search as a part of their reference design, right? So, so there'll be some place, whether it's you know a, a disk disk array service that they're using to, to put all that stuff in, but but not in SCD. Or well, or even the logs on the file system. Like so, the container logs themselves. We started just having log rotate, you know, truncate them or rotate them every day. And then if somebody off box, you know, wants those, then you have to look at log stash or Kibana or whoever, you know, to right. get it to get it out of here. But on the, the the chassis or on the setup itself, I mean, it's mm -hmm. like seven day rotation. But yeah, depending so, on how how bad how how, how much logging we have. But yeah, so AT and T would run uh, a syslog ng if you're familiar with that. Where you know instead of syslog writing to var log, um, it actually puts it on. I think it's the UDP port yeah, five fourteen or something like that. And just just packages it up and sends it off to somebody listening that, that writes it. So so a, a mature carrier will have everything in place to 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 actually archive, and it'll be highly optimized for reading and writing, you know, metrics, alarms, and all, you know, and, and, and raw data. But, I mean, there's, I don't think there's any intention to keep any long-term, any of that on the pod itself. I mean, no. it's just not built for it. I mean, I think a week is probably even yeah. overkill. Yeah. I think, you know, if you're technical support, you want to know what happened in the last hour when, right. when all of a sudden we start getting complaints or whatnot. Right. But if you're looking for weeks old data, then you're not going to look on the pod. Right. You would, yeah, on the highly optimized uh, network management platform. So, so I guess there's, there's classes of data that's going to go in the KB store, and there's types of data that won't. Um, if we could maybe formalize it, maybe a definition of that, and, and also types of data that's stored locally and types of data that's exported um, with limits on local storage, perhaps. Uh, but it basically, the first round table discussion to have. Yeah. And, okay. and publish. This is what the community expects developers. Yeah, I, I think that would be a very good thing to do. Uh, Sean, I don't think I captured everything you said. What am I missing here? Um, yeah, I think it's just basically, you know, we need to just define, if, if we're worried about the KV store and how big it can grow, we need to define what kind of data goes in there. And if, if we think the deployment plans of the carriers would okay. allow it to fit within there, then, you know, maybe we don't need some of the kind of 
database we could just use okay okay CD, but yeah so let, let me ask sean and the service providers is this you know sean i know you're going to kind of reach out to the service providers is there anything else you need me to clarify on this little list of dog memories after this meeting sean ying yeah um i think we'll be fine okay i thought so all right any other comments? If not, then I'll, if not, then I'll go back to listen to recording. Okay. 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 Other comments or discussion from the group? All right. I think we can go ahead and wrap it up for today then. So, Sean, you and I, ha Sean Ying, you and I have some action items to do here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and plan for the discussion on 506 on Monday. Next two, next no, 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 not Monday, on Tuesday, next Tuesday, and then a demo from the Foundry on next Thursday, and then we'll wrap up Sprint 7 tomorrow. So with that, I think I'll give you guys some time back today. So thanks, everyone.